Good morning. Happy third Sunday of Easter. Um, I'm here in our front yard, this time here in Castleberry, and uh, this is our uh, Norfolk pine um, there, and I'll, I'll give you a pan shot of it there, and you can see it's really tall. And it's a cool tree. And uh, we're here uh, in the, like I said, the front yard. And it's Sunday morning because um, Barb and I have been uh, having the spring break camp for our grandchildren, Lucy and Harrison. And, uh, you know, all week, the parent, uh, Jeremy and Caroline let them stay with us all week while they, you know, go back to work. And we have super enjoyed it because they're great kids and we really like to do it. Uh, we even took a train ride on the sun rail down to Point Siena. Um, and it's been very enjoyable. But as a result, um, we're pretty tired. <laughs> And yet, um, you know, wouldn't trade it for anything. It's It's been very enjoyable, and we've loved it. And I'm so glad that you guys, uh, many of you, will be able to return to church. We will not be able to right now. But, uh, you know, blessings on you for doing that. And um, for, uh, you know, continuing that support. Because it's... it's you know, really super important, not just for the church, but for, you know, uh, the, the spiritual health of um, the community. Because as you've seen from so many of um, Jesus' interactions and teachings, well, that Jesus saw that, um, you know, our um, status as members of the kingdom and of continuing to work at, you know in that in that way doesn't just change you and me which it does do and it doesn't just change the people around us which it does that as well it actually changes the world remakes the world john wesley uh, preached about the same thing that um the, the world is a fallen place because of sin and that we remake it, remake the world by our um, faithful adherence um, to God's plan in our lives, to being God's people in the world. It's that important. It, it's, it's, you know, not a trivial thing. So that... Uh, you know, being a vital part of church is, is huge and world changing. <laughs> so good on you. Today is uh, from Luke chapter 24, um, the second part of verse 36 and following from that. Jesus appeared and greeted them. They were frightened and terrified because they thought they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus said, why are you frightened? Why do you doubt? Look at my hands and feet and see who I am. Touch me and find out for yourselves. Ghosts don't have flesh and bones as I have. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and feet. His disciples were so glad and amazed that they could not believe it. Jesus asked them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate as they watched. Jesus said to them, While I was still with you, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the book of the prophets and the Psalms had to happen. Then he helped them understand the scriptures. And he told them, The scriptures say that the Messiah must suffer, and three days later he will rise from death. They also say that all people of every nation must be told in my name to turn to God in order to be forgiven. And, uh, you know, Jesus 
continues to teach them. And in, in Luke, it's a very um, <coughs> short process um, between him rising and uh, from the dead and ascending into heaven. And of course, it's from Luke later on that will you know, see the continuation of that process, um, you know, in, into Pentecost and the beginning of the church. But, you know, right now, prior to that, Jesus returns to them and um, they're still surprised. It's like, oh, no, Jesus. It's, and um, they still don't know what to make of it. Now, Luke doesn't tell us whether the disciples, because remember, he had 12 special friends that the apostles whom we call the apostles they didn't think of themselves as that yet but there were many disciples you know quite the crew of them uh, uh, that considered themselves disciples so um, when he's encountering disciples it's not necessary that um, they're the same people every time and yet given the circumstance even though um, you would imagine that some of them were the same that 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 you know the word has been spreading you know among the among his disciples that he's alive that it still has the air of uh, you know unbelievability about it that it's still amazing to them which, I've got to say, it's still amazing to us that, you know, when we do that, when we, when we worship the risen Jesus and talk about it in our everyday, you know, every week as, uh, you know, a part of our worship, it can be routine and yet incredible at the same time that, that it, it, you know, it's still hard to make out exactly what you know, you know what to do with the information. We talk about it casually. Christ is risen, and he is. And yet, to talk to somebody who had never encountered Christianity before, it has the air of unreality to them. That, that That's just incredible. You're saying, dude died three days, and, and then he was alive again? That's what you're saying? And he wasn't a zombie? Nope, he was... You know, good to go. As a matter of fact, uh, Jesus was, uh, you know, presumably aware of the whole zombie thing because he said, hey, you know, I'm kind of hungry. Can I have some fish? And he had a little nosh right there with him, ate the fish in their presence. And Luke goes out of his way to make sure we understand that he not only says, look, I've got I've got flesh and bones. Here are the... Here are the uh, wounds that I suffered just, you know, a little while ago. And um, so, uh, and I look like me, and just, uh, I, you know, I'm a little hungry, so can I, can I have a bite? And they said, well, yeah, here's some, you know, world haddock or whatever they had. And um, so he eats a little, you know, eats a meal with them right there, eats some fish. And this is after the experience of Emmaus, right after that, um, that the, the, the disciples from Emmaus had run back and said, hey, Jesus is alive. We just saw him in the breaking of the bread. I don't want to spoil that story. But um, and now he eats with the rest of the disciples. And they say they eat fish with him, which... You know, we don't have in the, you know, as one of our uh, sacraments, we don't have the breaking of the fish. It doesn't store as long. So, you know, there's that. And it, it, I got to say, it would be weird sta seeing the pastor stand up there and break a fish and then, you know, hand it out. Although, you know, boiled fish, if it's nice and flaky and fresh, that's... That's pretty good. Um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, you got to bake it fresh, of course. And 
uh, I don't know if they had, you know, lemon and butter to put on it. They didn't mention. But he eats the fish right there because he's he was flesh and blood like them and he is flesh and blood like them changed resurrected but things things aren't the same <laughs> the situation's not the same anymore which how could it be he was dead now he's alive and yet given even that um incredible situation he's still able to have a meal with him he's still able to uh, you know be in that intimate social setting that he had been for years and he's still able to teach them he's still able now by example but also by word to continue to lead them and help them to put his uh, death and resurrection into context, which they so desperately needed. They needed to see that, you know, the reality of the resurrection, which was key, because, um, you know, the teaching is one thing, but without the the certainty of the resurrection, the the teaching didn't didn't amount to much. What they were being asked to do to go be disciples in other lands to make disciples of of others wouldn't have amounted to much if there wasn't a reality to who Jesus was. And he's 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 touching them. He's eating with them. He's being with them. He's continuing to teach them and help them to. Um, figure out their place in the whole thing and how his teaching about the kingdom that he had done which even though he alluded to his death in his teaching now has a, a huge reality to it because uh, now they see it in a way that they, they couldn't have seen it before now they understand um, the you know, it wasn't just a, a um, symbolic death he was talking about. He was really going to have to die. He was really going to rise again and be with them. And it's that certainty that you and I live in of our own resurrection, but also, as I said at the beginning, the fact that Jesus' death and resurrection doesn't just affect Jesus. It doesn't just affect, um, you know, us as believers. It affects the whole world because we bring the whole world with us. Uh, no, don't get that, that the, the world is, you know, that just because I'm a believer, my unbelieving neighbor will, you know, get sucked up to heaven by some sort of vacuum thing. But that as we live our faithful lives in the certain reality of Jesus' resurrection, we live our lives differently. And as we live our lives differently, we make it, uh, you know, prepare the soil, so to speak, for those around us to live lives, live lives of faith as well. And change the world in that way and begin to remake it that's what Jesus was all about was making the world a new place and it you know Jesus was the only one that could do it and he did so that's pretty cool so uh, sometime this week broil a fish and uh, some kind of you know salmon maybe or uh, cod that's pretty good actually salted cod you know, you could get salted cod, and uh, th that's at room temperature, and it's it's you can kind of break that. So you could break cod, and then it, it you know let us break cod together on our knee, and uh, you know have that whole experience. 
and in that way uh, be reminded of the fact that Jesus is um, alive specifically for us and with us and that Jesus uh, reality of being alive uh, makes a difference for how we live our daily lives and in so far as that's true we remake the world one fish at a time and of course then as we do that as we you know continue to live our lives faithfully then we actually do uh, meet with our neighbors and and in that way share our faith help make disciples and we do bring them along with us whether you feed them fish or nuts something else entirely but that the reality of Jesus being with us is the key and understanding the uh, momentous nature of that in our everyday lives even as we talk about it but to grasp the fact that you and I get to be a part of that we get to participate in the reality of the resurrection so happy church and uh, uh, you know happy gathering together I love you guys and um, we'll talk to you later Bye.